Uh, we are starting our webinar, online live webinar. We got one viewer. Hello, viewer. And uh, here is me, Max Steinberg, and Michael is here. Mike, say hi, and then we will see. maybe you will. Hello. Yes, it automatically switches to you. When I said hello, it switched to you. Very good. Okay. So, uh, Mike, we'll start from different introductory things. Uh, Mike designed the website, and I welcome this initiative. I will now try to show you the website. Let me see if it works. Click Star Screen Share. It sh should be there. Yes, Mike, can you introduce the website? Yeah, so uh, this website is, uh, is for uh, common people in mainstream society. It's uh, it's focused on uh, evolution from fear toward love, from old paradigm toward a uh, new paradigm, and uh, that's the main goal of the site. Another goal is to share knowledge and and uh, discuss issues about about our society, environment, and hum humanity in general. So, Tell me about the structure. The structure. It's a uh, the first. Uh, you can see the uh, left menu, right? There is a uh, evolution. Uh, it's a it's a category which is focused on focused on uh, uh, mainstream society people. It's uh, it's uh, there. There are no spiritual matters, uh, so uh, common people don't get uh, distracted from it. Uh, Another category is science. It's uh, it's a uh, somewhat uh, provocative. It's a uh, it's uh, for mainstream people as well, but um, as well as for light workers and others. Personality is again for mainstream mainstream people, and the other categories is is uh, are mainly for light workers, and they are about spiritual matters uh, about. Uh, Ethereal bodies and uh, protection and healing and so on. No, and uh, you can you can uh, share your experiences there in a forum or in in a group. It's a it's a very new so uh, I don't have like a special plan for it now, but uh, I will introduce it through uh, videos and uh, I will post some articles on other websites so. We will, we will see. How do you um, join the website? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the same like human colonies. You can register oh, there. Join. So let, let, me, let me log out and I will um, try to join it again. OK. So log in. Log in, yes. No, so you can, you people can. want to register. So it's right here on the top. Can you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So click register. And then you enter username. Yes, username and, and email. Name, and that's about it. And you enter this strange thing symbols. Yeah, you um, just move. You really just move symbol. the numbers to the barcode. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you join the website, and then you can go to groups. Yes. And how many view? How many members do you have so far? And just one. <laughs> No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm another one, so I should have at least three. I think th the three people joined already. Two people yeah, joined. Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's uh, four or three people so far. Uh-huh. I'll click on members see what happens. Yes, yeah. five people, and all of them, I know them. These are from yeah, one colony website. They are from colonies, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let me then click on human colonies. How do you do this? I just click on my bookmark, but basically it's humancolonies.org. And I will speak humancolony.org, right? And I should see ourselves here, right here. Can you see us? Yeah. I don't want. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll click and then I'll. No, I wouldn't click because it will slow down the the connection. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to show about? Uh, tell about the Human Colonies website. It was started October eighth. October, November, two months ago, is it right? Yeah, it's uh, like uh, the beginning of, of, of October. It's yeah, that's two months. It, it, was, it was before November, so. 
Mike. All right. Uh, I'll switch to my face because uh, I don't want right now to show anything on the website. I'll just switch to my face. How do I do this? Yes. Hello. So what's what? What about the website? Um, it started from uh, the question of from up there. They asked me how do we bring how do we invite more volunteers to the to the colonies. And I gave them some advice. As I said, look on the light workers websites, on star seeds networks, and things like of that sort. And uh, there are channelings, and there are groups like Bashar's uh, list on uh, on Yahoo dot on Yahoo groups. There is a Bashar discussion group. So people on these sites are are very advanced, and they would volunteer <laughs> to go up there. And then they realize, how about we post the invitation? So I posted the invitation first on Bashar's group, then on um, other groups, um, discussion lists, and then I realized. Mm, I should invite. The, 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 there are updates, and there are more, more, more information than you can fit in one invitation. So it started growing, growing, and growing, and the response was extraordinary in the beginning. It was, I would say, first day we received about about 30, 20 to 30 applications. The second day was about 20 to 30, and it kind of, we kind of. How do you call it? Skimmed, skimmed the the milk. We collected the light workers, which were ready, which were looked, and some of them were actually brought some some kind of. They got the messages. They were they, they got the urge to look up at that at that particular uh, invi invitation, and they applied. So the invitation was to apply to go to the colonies. So the aliens were overwhelmed as well, and they still. Or are overwhelmed by, by the response. They didn't they didn't expect you know because when you look from above to Earth, I should have a globe here to get the image. So there is the Earth, and they're kind of somewhere on the world. But they look from above, and they take an average, and you know the, an average human with probability 99.99999 percent would be scared by the idea of being of going up there and joy, joining the aliens and meeting with them on the alien ships. So the conclusion was absolutely statistically significant. You know, humans don't want to go. And then a miracle happens. They get a lot, a lot, a lot of applications in the first days. Now the number of applications kind of goes down. And one of the reasons it goes down because the aliens are not ready to take the people who volunteered. So so far about 200 people volunteered. So the peak was about 20, 30 first today, each day first two days, first first few days. And then it subsided, and now we get one application maybe in two or three days. So, so the people who were online they applied, and people maybe there are many other people who who want to go, but they don't, either don't speak English, they may not find the, the the announcements, they don't use internet, or mm, some people want to go, but they don't trust that this invitation is real. Many of those are. Of that category, people really would like to go, but they don't trust me. Saying, "Hey, here is the invitation." So about the aliens, it's more sophisticated. So they have the human colonies. The, col the colony started, I believe, late May this year, so about half a year ago. And uh, I, I proposed to them basically the first time when the aliens spoke to me, the, our alien friends, the extraterrestrials spoke to me. That was through Jim. And they say hi, um, you know, we were watching you, blah blah blah. You wanted to speak to us here. We're speaking to you. Uh, and that wasn't recorded because it wasn't expected. But you know, first thing I said, I volunteer to go up there. Uh, I submit my application. And the reason I said in that in that way was that I know they have huge bureaucracy up there. I do know that. I did research. Raw material is the first book I uh, I really research very very carefully, and apparently there is a lot of uh, bureaucracy, and everything is uh, decided by committees. So you have to apply and then review it, and uh, you get approved. And now the, the result of you know of the delay is again the bureaucracy. They they started a committee which was reviewing the applicants, and they can't come up with a with the answer. And the problem is that. 
it's not safe for the applicants because they apply online, they kind of, uh, their names are accessible. Even those who applied a sort of anonymously still, there is a tiny chance that, you know, some bad guys could, could trace them. So second thing they are scared of is that uh, what if it is a negative person who pretends to be good, but in fact it is negative, which will go up there and do some, some negative stuff up there. Third, what about it's a good person, but when it comes back, they change their mind and tell some secrets, you know, the location of the colonies or something of that sort to bad guys. And a uh, million other reasons. And one of the reasons, it's not safe to take people uh, be, with poor health or with a uh, spirituality frequency below 5.0. That's a big topic. So most of the applicants are below, I, I'm below 5.0, so most of the applicants are. So So for us, it's not safe. And my question to aliens obviously is and remains, uh, when they did abductions, you easily took any humans. They could be, you know, pretty, pretty average, and average is 3.5. So why can't you take us average people who really want to go up there? Um, and you know the visits. If you don't know, the visits are short. The visits are two weeks, and you come back in the same time when you left. So here I would be absent for five minutes, and I will be spending two weeks. These five minutes are stretched to to two weeks up there. So some people spend two weeks, go away for a little while, spend two weeks here, go go there, spend two weeks. So it goes like that. Mm. Tick, two, two, two. <laughs> So it's two continuous lines, two parallel lines here and there, and it go back and forth every two weeks, uh, from their perspective and from our perspective. But this this stretching takes place. Mike, what what do you want to say? Uh, I think you said it all. <laughs> the important. Uh, no, there is tons more to say, but I just want to take uh, attention to you. Yeah. So uh, I know we can start with questions now, or. No, we're still in the introductory phase. Just you know, do your 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 uh, speaking on that topic. Okay, so uh, I think human colonies is a very good project. It it will teach us uh, uh, teach us uh, about aliens, about different races, what they do, how they behave, what their intentions are, and uh, perhaps they will work with with us on our issues, uh, global issues. We need to solve soon because uh, else that we have like 14 years before the crisis, before the chaos, before 50% of population will perish or something like that. So it, it's uh, it's strange, but I'm glad they will help us with uh, disasters and catas other catastrophes, uh, natural disasters. I mean, they will they will help us with us. So it's good from this perspective, but it's bad. At L will cause the financial crisis, and so we need their help anyway. So I think it's it's all. Thank you. All right. So uh, you mentioned L. Yeah. I have to talk about L. Yeah, L came through very soon after we started channeling. I think it was within within two three weeks. Um, uh, they invited L, and uh, I spoke to L, and. I, I realize that it is ancient, an ancient god. And what do you say to the god? You know, God comes to you, speaks through a channel, and says, hello, I'm El, and who is El? Uh, he didn't say he is God, but I, I understood that. Uh, and he was introduced as a group consciousness or a group spirit. Very, spirit, very you know, highly spiritual thing, you know, maybe outside of even dimensions. I don't know. I didn't ask them what dimension they are, but I assume they might not even have a dimension. They operate in higher dimensions, I would say seven and higher, but but you know, I didn't ask where they're located. And L was was known to many cultures, names Michael, Emmanuel, Mike uh, Elohim, a lot, a lot of words, a lot of ancient gods have, have that L right there. Uh, so what it is, what is it? Uh, I understand that this is a, uh, one of the gods or one of the deities responsible for distribution, optimal distribution of 
resources resources anywhere, including nature, plants, sea, uh, you know, whoever lives in the sea, planets, stars, distribution of resources. That's their specialty. They're kind of housekeeping uh, resource manager. Um, uh, I ask aliens all the time about it, and they say 99% of our galaxy developed species who are four density, they use uh, four density is the same thing as four dimension. Uh, the aliens, the extraterrestrials, use the services of L to distribute their wealth, their resources. Lirans uh, said that they used L in, in the past, but they don't use them anymore. So it, it's sort of a volunteer thing for them. The civilization can decide either to use L or not to use L. Apparently, L was in communication with Earth intensively, extensively in, in a distant past. But right now, they say they don't speak to many humans, maybe only a few. Uh, but they say they're involved with, with nature. And when they said, are you involved in nature? And they said, always. I involved with animals. They said always. I involved with the banks, banks, and they said always. So they kind of watch over, but they uh, don't always interfere. And apparently, they they find out that it is impossible to fix things like, as they are <clears throat> because of all negative groups and dissociation and fear. So the only rational way they see is to let inevitable happen to do to allow for economic collapse. And then when things fall apart, it's easier to build from scratch. And you can read the Elf's, Elf's uh, recent uh, conversation. It was, I think, a few days ago, less than a week ago. It's right on the website, humancolony.org. And it says, an important uh, conversation with L. So we read it. It's only half an hour, and it's short when, when, it, when it's transcribed. And they confirm again that they plan that Current plan is that that collapse will happen in 14 years, 2027. It's I think it's already 13 years, right? It's 13 years from now. Mm -hmm. And also they said the chances that uh, you know they they estimate that about half of human population will die as a result of that collapse. Okay, um, you know when I he first heard that. I sort of, that was a long time ago, I sort of didn't believe, but you know, I hear that and I ask all, all the other aliens, were, you know, I'm talking to them through the same channel, it all comes through, the, through one channel, Jim, Jim Charles, and you can see lots of videos on the site, um, but, but it's all very consistent, I ask, you know, every alien I, I ask, speak about, I say, are you in communication with L, and what do you think about that, and they say, they all confirm that that is real, it's, uh, and that they, they are in communication with L, and they are mo most of them are in collaboration with L. Basically, L decides, and maybe maybe the the creator decides, and then L just performs the the duty, the dirty job. Oh, and uh, the next question: How do they? How the humans will die? That, that I was I don't speak to L very often. I think it was my fourth or fifth conversation, and they are very short. When they speak to God, how do you? You know, somehow you become less. Uh, articulate, you know, asking a lot of questions are not that easy when you speak to uh, L, and also doesn't seem to be very talk talkative. They kind of avoid a lot of questions. But here, ask the right question, you know, in which way the humans will die? Would it be from from wars? Actually, it's from the past conversation. Or well, from disasters? And this time he said, no, Then they said, not the disasters, not wars. It will be from Local violence, basic and, and it makes sense. Basically, uh, the aliens, our alien friends, say they they don't see for coming disasters in the next 14 years. It uh, the, the economic crisis will not coincide with economic disaster, no, with uh, with a natural disaster or the war. They should be able to prevent big big disasters and the wars. They have the technology and power and authorization to, to prevent those disasters. But but you know if the economic collapse economy collapses basically, and I was also thinking that humans will die from hunger. 
and they say no, no, not hunger. It's it's more like vi local violence. Basically, a lot of big cities are not ready for. Um, are not you know people in the cities are not capable of living, and uh, there, will, there will be just a lot of we call it upheaval, upheaval. And uh, I was I experienced that in Moscow in 1992, 93. 91, 92, 93, uh, and it was scary. We we went to the outskirts of Moscow, so we were, we were in a safe zone. But but you know, at the time when uh, it was unexpected, it it happened. Uh, you know, that was attack of the our TV tower. We sh we, we saw the people with uh, with uh, uh, automatic guns, and uh, we we uh, we turned off the light because we were uh, you know on the third floor. It was pretty close. We had children and. Uh, in the house, so we sat with the lights turned off, and we were afraid to go outside. So I heard the shootings, and it was was it was an experience. And next day, I sort of myself without children, I went out and just saw people, and I saw a person with a gun sleeping on the grass because you know they didn't take over the tower, so they weren't in the tower. They kind of was dispelled, and he was in the grass. So you know that gives a perspective, you know, how a half of population could die. And he said, everybody will be warned in advance, so people would be advised to go outside of the cities and wait for about five months in rural areas where uh, they will be safer. And they can take provisions with them and, and just wait. And then when it's over, you will be guided, with the help of aliens, you will be guided how to rebuild. And I asked, you know, if the aliens will take responsibility and he didn't understand the question, so I asked if the aliens will take the control of the situation, and they said no. They will be advisors. So I think it is important. Now, an important factor, he said, I say important, and he said, uh, is that the percentage went from 60% of population, which is 60% of 7 billion, I guess it's about f almost 4 billion people would die, uh, went to... 50%, 3.5 billion. It's still a huge number, but in about a few months, that percent went down from 60 to 50. So, and again, he didn't say it's fixed 2027. It's approximate. So, as it happened before with 2012, and there were other dates where channelers said, you know, things will happen. 1993 was uh, was a prediction. Then 1994 was a prediction for things to happen. Then 2000 was a prediction. 2001 was a big date for uh, when when the channelers channeled messages predicted something to happen. But 2012 was was most most close and most disappointing time when nothing happened, nothing big happened. Small things happened, but it was a smooth transition, smooth evolution. It wasn't a sharp event. It was nothing. You know, we wait, we were waiting, and nothing happened. And actually. I, so sort of just based on looking at channel messages, it was my, my take too. Nothing radical will happen on 20, well, December 21st. And it is on my book and it is on my website. Make sure, you know, uh, it, it's documented. So, so uh, again, my take here, Michael, what is your take, take here? And then I will say my take. How do you expect it? Oh, <clears throat> I know how to. Uh, uh, I don't. I think it's important for us to uh, decide. Uh, I mean, for people and cities to decide what they need and uh, what they expect uh, personally uh, on individual basis. Everyone needs to decide uh, what values they ac accept, what what uh, what they will do, how they will act. I think it's important. It's important to decide. It's a move from fear uh, toward respect and love. And I, I think it's, um, it comes natural to uh, adapt yourself to environment and perhaps move outside, outside of the city. I think I'll mention, mention it that way because um, our, uh, I, I, I don't want to say that our city system is bad, but it's, uh, it's kind of uh, too uh, crowded. And it's uh, it, it's not in balance. So uh, yeah, I I I think that uh, 
Al expressed it in a very good way for us, and he he also said it uh, like something like, "We are one, but we are many." And it's, it's the same for us. We are one, but we are many. We have to uh, join together and uh, ch change values together. It's important to change values first, then and then other things. Hmm. All right. I think you. I, I I like what you said. Uh, uh, let me ask you one more question. Uh, do okay. you believe it is Al, and do you believe what he says is true? Yeah, it's it's a hard question, <laughs> but it's 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 always better to be prepared, you know. It's uh, it's always better. Like we have to prepare for the first contact, whether it will be or not. It's we have to be prepared for it because if if we are not prepared, we will we will uh we will die. So it's like it's 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 simple. It's like a sur survival. It's simple survival. You mean collectively? Yeah, collectively. Possible. No, no, not completely, but possible. Yeah, it could be a big shock. All right, so what, what is my take? Is it real or not? Mm. I'm sure Jim is not is not making it up. I'm 100% sure. Uh, I trust Jim, and also there were so many indications that the beings that come through Jim are, are not Jim. They say things which... Jim doesn't know. They uh, do unexpe unexpected things, say unexpected things, which is just impossible to make up. Uh, sometimes if they say something, you know, obvious, you know, can say, yeah, it can be faked. But uh, sometimes it's just laugh laughable when, you know, how aliens react to things is is, is impossible for a human to to fake it just the logic is so different and it can you know when you look retrospectively at what was said you just say it's so alien to us you, there is no question uh, so so in general I believe that consciousnesses that come through Jim are a real spirits real culture and they're so different one from another so uh, very recognizable so I I think uh, Jim is just a channel and whatever comes is is really from outside of G. And uh, again, every time I ask myself, are these aliens real or is it all just spiritual phenomenon of something weird? And, you know, the question, uh, just to, you know, what, what, what is, what is something solid about aliens? Can you uh, get a proof, some kind of everyday proof that it is real? Obviously, I have friends who had a very close, very very close encounters. For them, it's easy. They already, it's already part of them. Uh, so, so talking to the friends, so you really saw that it was very close, and, and that helps one thing. And because I'm I'm out in the open, people come to me now and share the experience, and they kind of become very typical. I kind of, I don't even ask, question them extensively about every experience because there is so many of them, and they all very similar. But second thing is YouTube. Um, there is now several channels which have this per week, every week they, they uh, summarize what they find on different YouTube videos and summarize the, the sightings of, of uh, UFOs. So this week, this week, this week, or by, I think they do it by, by month. Yeah, best sightings of October, best sightings of November. And just go there and check it out. Best sight, UFO sightings of uh, October. I think August and July were great. And just by looking at that is um, you get I get refreshed. You know that is for real. Even if if it is not exactly the same aliens, you know the phenomenon is absolutely real. Um, so witnesses phenomenon um, are crop circles. Uh, you know every week of summer uh, there are uh, every day maybe one or two crop circles pop up, and some of them are. Absolutely extraordinary. So the number, just pure number of crop circles and people who watch them, measure them, you can see videos. It's all real. I mean, that part of magic. Um, Reiki for me. Re you know, Reiki is healing by laying on hands. I am I'm a Reiki healer now. I am a Reiki master. And I have the proof of miracle in my hands. It's You don't even have to touch a person. You you feel the energy. And the and they feel your energy, and I can even send the energy from one hand to another. And right now, I feel as 
like a little ray kind of moves through my hands. Like I can feel it, and even from big distance, I can still feel it. And and that is, I know it's not electromagnetic. It is electromagnetic, meaning electromagnetic and etheric. It's it's not pure electromagnetism. You can put even uh, some some separator, and it will still feel it. So so that that is real. Uh, and so I have a proof of miracle of something spiritual right here uh, uh, on, on my uh, fingertips, as you say. Um, dreams and meditation, obviously, are, are nice. So I, I, I'm sure it's, it's real. And I'm pretty sure this L is not making things up. It is group spirit. And, uh, and what they say is, is real for them. And they're not, making, make, they're not making it up. Now, with all that said, previous predictions failed. In most cases, big predictions about the contact and troubles failed. And why is that? Um, Michael, I'll give you first hit for that. Okay, I think it's because we have uh, different versions of future. We have free will, so if we if we don't have free will, we uh, yeah, there there will be just one future. But we we have free will, and we uh, have to decide. We ha we are part of God, part of His uh, mind. So we need to decide what to do, and then when we do it, we uh, we adapt our uh, our reality to ourselves. We don't just uh, yeah. We make an intention and we adapt our reality, our own reality, uh, individual individual or collectively. Like uh, I can adapt my reality reality and uh, others. Others theirs, and collectively we can we can change the entire uh, the entire Earth reality. So uh, yeah, it's it's because we have free will and we can influence it. They are just uh, the predictions are just uh, clues and guides. So, uh, they are not uh, real futures. Yes. Perfect. That, that, that's what I wanted to say. Um, I'll just rephrase it uh, using Bashar's analogy. Bashar is my favorite teacher, channeled extraterrestrial from Sasani race. Sasani. Um, so what he explains is that uh, the law of attraction, basically. Uh, everybody is familiar with it, but just, just another take on it, another perspective on it. So every time you make a choice, the reality splits. So there is a choice going right and going left. All right, so you made a choice. So your consciousness, your attention moves by that path. And then it splits again. It moves by that path. And then it splits again, moves by that path. So, and you're making these choices all the time. You know, just by, you know, all the time you're making this, you're forced, the nature of 3D is you are forced to make this choice. Even if you refuse to make a choice, it's still a choice. And sometimes you, you are forced to make a choice. So, <clears throat> so we end up in different versions of reality. And other versions of reality also exist. That's a big, big, big thing. So when a being from outside, spiritual being from outside, consciousness from outside of our reality looks at us, it sees all versions, the version where the Earth destroyed itself, the version where the Earth went through totalitaristic system uh, or Orion system. It was taken over by Orion aliens or reptilians and went this way. Or in the version where the Earth already ascended and we are already in the four densities. So all these realities coexist. So for them to look at that is also sort of difficult, but they can focus their attention on different versions of, of the reality. So when they speak to us here, they see that the most likely path, collective consciousness, will go there, and in, two, in, in 13 years we'll get that economic crisis, and uh, that's the best what can be done. And free will of us, and also free will of L, and free will of aliens is part of that equation which brings us to 2027 crisis. So, but previous predictions failed 
meaning that you and I in this reality, we ended up in this positive reality where nothing bad happened, but also nothing exceptionally good happened. So the contact didn't happen in our reality yet, the open contact. But the big disasters didn't happen in our reality. So somehow, with our choices, you and I ended up in this reality, right here at that moment in this webinar. And your viewers, we have three viewers right now. Hello. We accept your donations. Go to my website and donate. $20 would be great. Uh, through PayPal, we accept checks, credit cards as well. So uh, you, all of us, are ended up in this moment, in this reality, where open contact haven't happened, but big disaster haven't happened. So the predictions of the past failed because of our choices. And our choices are defined by our frequency, our thinking, and our spiritual mood. So that's where it's very important where, where we want to go. If you focus on suspicion and fear, and expecting the worst. By law of attraction, you're attracting that. You basically, you look there with suspicion. And where you look, you find. Here is an example. At some point, I was really, I, I'm coming from from pretty cold climate in Russia. So I ended up in, uh, in Maryland, which was pretty humid and hot in the summer. And I was felt miserably because my body is not suited for, for hot weather. So I thought, I will look for a job somewhere else, but I wouldn't apply to the hot places. I would apply only where, where it's colder. So and now I ended up in Rochester, which is the coldest possible in, 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 that, in East Coast uh, middle area and middle United States, central United States. It's kind of as far as you can go, then Ontario and, and Canada. I wish to go even no, to, to a little more north, then the nature will be more familiar to me. It feels better. So I looked up, I looked at north, up meaning north on the map, and applied only to these places. Just because of my attention, I ended up there. If I was looking south, I might have ended up to the south. So where you look, you find. There's a law of attraction, you know, very practical. So you wouldn't find where you don't look. Uh, so, again, if you focus on positive, if you focus on peaceful aliens, best intention gods, best intention angels and spirits, and you wouldn't even notice all negativity which happens. You turn off your TV, turn off your TV, or donate it to someone, not to us. Donate your TV, uh, and look up on the website which raise your mood, make you happier. You have to be aware of negativity, but you don't focus on it. You do you know, yes, I accept that and I don't pay attention to that. I don't even know who are the presidents right now. I had to look up the president of Israel recently. All right, so um so just by focusing on but I do know the, the channelers and I know who are speaking to us and I'm aware of gods and that, that's my attention where my attention is and ascension is my attention okay and I recommend that to you so when you focus on positivity you will end up in a positive in a positive um, reality so the purpose your purpose and my purpose and Michael your purpose is to reduce this 50% loss to zero yes Hopefully, 14 years is a big span, and obviously the contact, how it will happen, will change radically the predictions. Right now it's 50%, and I'm saying, and the aliens listen to me, I say that all the time, but it is important. If the aliens who come with the contact become as popular as Beatles, everybody wins, our ascension will be way easier. They, they have the opportunity, they, they have the chance, they have the opportunity to become as popular as Beatles or more. Because they have knowledge, they can share some of the technologies, at least the peaceful ones, you know, the free energy, the information technology, the health technologies, the food technologies, and they already share some of those, so, so it's not a big deal to share them again. They share them with... Uh, bad guys, and bad guys kept them skipping secrets. So now share that with the good guys, and uh, and everybody will become happier. 
So, uh, but basically, I guess the main, you know, the main message they, they bring is uh, spiritual. So, with this spiritual message, you are our alien friends, our extraterrestrial friends, star people, can become as popular as Beatles and change our history. And in this case, it's 50% will go to zero. Michael? Yeah, I think you said it's true. So, uh, I will only say that uh, uh, they have to plan the conduct properly because if they don't plan it, uh, it can cause a um, disaster uh, on, the, uh, on the other hand. So, we have to be prepared for it and they have to find a way using the, using the colonies uh, uh, how to make the contact uh, uh, to avoid any disaster, or any, any killing, any violence. So. All right, so uh, the status of the contact. Obviously, I asked, uh, take me up there, and then I kind of developed my idea. I said, how about you take the whole my family up there, and we will start a colony. Obviously, children need, uh, need company, so I wanted a colony of different families mingling together with aliens, and we will learn, and they will learn, and together we will broadcast the information down on Earth through YouTube, and now I realize you know, the information up there is gold, so our television networks, our news agencies will be happy to buy this information. So it even can be a financially successful enterprise, self-sustaining. Um, so I, and I realized, because the channel go, going through Jim was too narrow, I, I decided to write. And I wrote them letters. I created a Gmail account for them, and uh, I emailed to Jim and to that Gmail account. and. They, they are capable, obviously, they're capable of receiving emails if they want to, if they pay attention. Uh, so, so I wrote the whole book, which is on my site. Buy this book. Uh, it's available for purchase on, on, in paper, and also you can download it or read just on the website for free, the electronic version. And the site is obviously humancolony.org. Um, and there I outlined the plan for the for the colonies, and it grew big. It is many many chapters where I outlined the plan, and uh, soon after they started the colonies. The idea was take me, but you know somehow they don't want to take me. They don't even want to show themselves to me. I have never seen a, 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 a first hand. I have never seen uh, an alien or a, a saucer or any other craft. Um, <clears throat> But but they started the colonies again. We know that only through Jim and through other few people who contacted us on the site. The information is very limited through other people, but through Jim it's pretty extensive. So the colonies grew to over 100 people. Total about 200 people went to colonies, spent uh, spent about two weeks each, and went back. And then they kind of some of them cycled back and forth. Um, three colonies exist. Um, one person is there, uh, as they say, forever. They uh, they volunteered to, he volunteered to to be uh, the first permanent resident of human colonies. Uh, two colonies exist on um, on the ships, on mother ships, and one colony exists on uh, on the ground of some other planet, and uh, they don't tell which planet. One colony was here on Earth for a while, uh, on on some location which was hidden. Uh, but then uh, they just realized that it's not safe, and they, they took it away. And I advised them to take it away. And when I advised them to take it away, I didn't say, you know, take your time. So they took it away within minutes. And it was very traumatic for the colonists. But in any way, uh, <clears throat> uh, we spoke to, the, to one of the colonists once. It was Randall. And second time, it was a very brief conversation. And the second time we spoke, and that conversation was deleted. They deleted from my recording system. The file went black. Mm -hmm. And the second conversation uh, was recorded recently with uh, James. And it is listened to it on the website. And it's I think it was transcribed, possibly. Yes, it was transcribed. So it, it is very informative. Um, right now, they have about under 100 people in, 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 in the sky. All of them are volunteers. Many of them are children. I say maybe 10, 15% are children. 
And the main project is to develop telepathy in humans, because all other races, when they make it from third to fourth dimension, they do it by uniting telepathically into global consciousness, global mind. You don't lose the individuality, but people start to talk telepathically. And we are somehow slow in becoming telepaths. So far, they do group meditations in the colonies, and they were able to uh, develop, help develop in telepathy in, uh, I think, maybe eight telepaths right now, seven or eight telepaths. And these people become very enlightened. They talk to aliens, they talk to each other, and that also educated aliens tremendously. When they spoke to first telepath, they uh, they discovered the humanity for themselves. They understand us much better right now. So from the website, we applied, uh, 200 people applied, only three went up, and only two kind of continue going up and down, and one sort of dropped down, dropped off the project. I don't know why. Um, so it's not that applications are futile. Again, from 200 people, three were taken. So you have 1% chance. So we're still advising applications, and they're still considering the applications, but the rate is, is pretty short, pretty low. One, it's about 1.5% 1, 1 of, of applications are accepted. They also say they might contact us down here, and that's where we created the ground team. So basically, if they don't take us, we still can have the contact down here. And that's a big deal. Uh, when they come here, uh, they will need places to stay. Not in our apartments, obviously, but you know they will have to create campuses, which are safe for the aliens, safe for humans, where people will mingle together. Obviously, you know there should be a camp. That's what I'm saying. There should be a campus on UN, United Nations, and there should be campuses at universities. I think universities are most open, most appropriate for aliens to um, study humans culturally, and for humans study aliens culturally, to work together, exchange information, and so on. So, so I imagine it as ac uh, restricted access places like embassies of aliens down here. Also, I think it would be very important to start communication up there. So first, without enforcing themselves down here, they can invite people up there. Obviously, uh, representatives from United Nations, maybe from different big countries, small countries, uh, organizations, churches, religions, uh, public. And my main statement is, it's not politicians who are our main representatives, because politics is very, very limited, very distorted. Uh, no one is fully supported by people, even well well elected. Uh, but uh, our celebrities are truly true representatives. So inviting our celebrities up there and having them to talk to aliens first hand, first hand would, be, would be ideal. And uh, some of them are really good. You will laugh, but uh, but who are the celebrities which I would really invite there? Like some smart ones, some good ones with good heart. I think the sport players, some of those are really good. Tennis players, basketball players, you know, some good guys who we really love, who we really respect. Uh, singers, actors, movie producers. Uh, I would invite all people from Star Trek. They have been thinking, they have been ahead of curve many years, maybe 50 years ahead of curve. So some of them are still alive and they are, they deserve to be invited. Our oh, astronauts, you know, a lot of people who devoted themselves to contact, as obviously. Stephen Greer, I think, is very qualified, very much qualified. Uh, Alfred Weber, many other. Um, Michael? Yeah, I would invite celebrities and uh, representatives, polit politicians maybe, and uh, people from MIC, of course. Uh, but uh, from MIC, MIC military industrial complex, introduced by Eisenhower, the 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 abbreviation, and it represents very much. Yeah, so uh, people people from there, and and uh, they'll have to create more colonies in space for that purpose, and. 
yeah, I, I think it's important to invite celebrities, uh, representatives, MIC, and yeah, and it's our work here as a ground, ground team to support them from Earth. Yes, and us. And us, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will, uh, I will uh, every time I mention military, I have to elaborate. Uh, there is a lot of work for military, even after the contact. I did it last time, I repeat it again in short. So the main purpose of military is very honorable to keep peace on Earth. It, things wouldn't change because of the conduct. There will be still uh, need for keeping peace on Earth. Uh, there is so much diversity, so much anger, so much suffering that military will still be needed as Earth police. It would be nice if all military united and kept peace all together. And they are uni united in many ways. I know they are united. Even the countries which are fighting with each other, there are secret services which shake hands and transfer information back and forth. So they are united secretly, but it would be nice if they united openly. And when we have aliens, it's obvious the aliens have so much more power, including ability to do things and change things in, uh, in a very profound way. So, you know, fighting human wars doesn't make any more sense after that. Mm -hmm. second, a second mission for military, positive military, would be to uh, help with, with the disasters. Disasters still happen, and the Earth is still transforming and will be transforming essentially and substantially more. So help with disasters requires the organization, speed, and technology which military have. So uh, help with disasters is third purpose, and, th and third, quite unexpected, but basically there are bad aliens, especially reptilian pirates, I would say, who fly around solar system. There is about 1,000 reptilians, as we have said, as we have been told. And uh, right now, our friendly aliens are guarding the Earth from these guys, from taking over the planet. So uh, they are inviting uh, humans to join their them on uh, on the ships, and they already have sort of practiced uh, modifying the human, uh, modifying the the controls of the ships so the humans can control them. Obviously, much of that control is telepathic. Uh, so um, the mentality of military as protecting the country has to be expanded to protecting the globe, and that makes perfect sense. Or oh, even solar system. So it makes a, there is a little bit a lot of work anyway. But you know, some of the obvious dis, how do you call it, distortions have to be fixed. Michael? Yeah, I think so. It's, um, it's important to keep a uh, positive military and uh, positive leaders. And, but we need to uh, kind of uh, split ourselves to smaller groups so we can connect in a more efficient way, if, if it makes sense. It's, a, it's like we need to uh, use a synergy. That's a, for example, what we do now as a ground team, we connect our minds together, and we are like a, a small community, small tribe, yes? And uh, I guess uh, other people should do it as well, connect with their friends and family and people they like, and... Uh, Develop very values, uh, support one one another, and work on issues together. And then, when we have these small groups, we can connect on a more more global level as a nations uh, or alliances, and then as a planet, and as, then as universe. So um, we need to start small, but we need to uh, we need to uh, expand our relationship to the entire universe this way. So we are more the most efficient because we used to we used to live in uh, used to live in tribes and uh, small communities for uh, like for the entire history. So it's a more it's a most it's a, it's the most natural and efficient way for us to work together. Thank you. I will expand on that, and you can prepare the questions, and we'll start discussing the questions. We already spent okay. 54 minutes in, with introduction, and I think it's well, uh, it was time well spent. If you have to do more, we'll do more. I think uh, the idea of doing webinars like that is great. 
Uh, and hello the viewers and you can donate and you can join the website if you haven't. Uh, what I wanted to say is just the numbers. Our website has about humancolony.org has about 200 users registered. Uh, about 180 are subscribed to our daily news by email so they, they possibly are reading those emails unless they charge them all the time. And out of those about 10 to 13, 15 are active. So some people post, some people discuss, some people comment, and some people are really devoted. And you know, it's it's a pity that people came because they wanted to go up. I mean, everybody came to that website because they wanted to go up. And obviously, the ones which are active, you know, they they are down here and they haven't been there. I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, they would tell told me would have told me. But but it's nice we already have a group of friends. And that's what we have to work with. And my, my alien friends say, say it's not by chance that these people joined. It was sort of intended. There is some kind of sign of destiny here. So we guys are together in a very interesting quest. And I welcome everybody. And please be more active. Uh, I registered another site, which is so the function of the site changes from inviting more people to join the colonies. I guess I'm putting that on hold. It's OK to invite people, but I'm putting that invitation on hold until the aliens make up their mind, fix their bureaucracy, and finally start taking people up. If they don't take people up, then uh, inviting them would be, what's that word? Trickery. I don't know. There is another word. It's not, it's not honest to just bring people to the site for the purpose of growth of the site, but people think they, they will go also up there. Some people still wait. They apply, and then they wait. And nothing happens. But for some people, what, they, what happens, they get interviews. And some of those interviews are very extensive and very nice and very profound, very spiritually profound and very physically profound. You really cannot be mistaken if you have had a real interview. Uh, and some of those people uh, who had interviews shared their experiences. So just applying for some people ended up in um, getting profound experiences. So I know it's it's already beyond me and Jim just speaking to each other. It's it's wider. We have a group group of people who experience something and a group of people who believe in us. And this connects. It still is. It's a bit an important point. It is still it still didn't manifest fully into something tangible, profound, touchable, tangible. It is still in the group mind of this few individuals. Me, Jim, you, and the, the ones who watch that, and the ones who are on the side. So is it real or not? Mike, sorry, I have to, you know, that's also, uh, I think it's one of the questions everybody asks. So we answer an, an important question. OK. Um, we can start with easy questions, uh, if no, it's um, better. Or... Sorry, I, uh, you didn't hear what I said. The fact that we are here and these colonies, and we yeah. believe in that, but others don't, is it real or not? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, for us it's real, definitely. And <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what we need to do is uh, show more evidence, more obvious evidence. And we don't have any more evidence. All the evidence we have to show, it's all public, nothing hidden. Yeah, it's nothing in, but uh, we. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a kind of uh, hard because uh, aliens are uh, very cautious and diplomatic, and they they don't want us uh, to know like uh, what they are like uh, exactly, how they look, what uh, or videos with them, and perhaps they will send us some videos soon. So. I hope so. Is it true? Yeah, I hope, I hope so too. I hope so. so, but I don't know how soon it will happen. Eventually. All right, so I, I will answer it myself. Um, so here there is the idea of matrix. Ma how do you say matrix or matrix? Matrix, yeah. An idea of matrix. Uh, we are all playing computer game. And we are higher beings. We are higher selves. We are playing down here. And uh, I don't know if may, many of my listeners right now some of them maybe don't don't uh, don't play computer games, but some do. 
So in these computer games, you play the computer game, and from day to day, the, uh, the programmers modify the game, and they bring more and more sophistication to it. My kids are playing Minecraft. And as they develop, more and more uh, sophistication comes to that game. And sometimes they change the scenario of that game. Minecraft doesn't have much of a scenario, but, but it has some. Uh, the first it was just the Earth, model of the Earth, then created the underworld, they created the overworld. So they create kind of a model of the universe and it becomes more and more sophisticated. So uh, obviously the phenomenon of aliens is, is, is as real as it can be. They exist, there is a lot of sightings and there is a lot of first-hand experience, especially abductees, uh, alien abductees, they, they are so traumatized it cannot be imagined. It's, it's so real. And it wasn't imagined by them. So it's already went beyond individual imagination. It's more physical. And uh, there are books and books and movies. So, so it's real in a way. But this new contact, new colony thing, is didn't manifest in our reality fully yet. So it exists in some sort of non-manifested stage yet. It's still being programmed in this reality. So I think the, the, the team of programmers who program our reality is, is working hard to, 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 uh, to, uh, to implement it and to manifest it here. And again, it's up to our choices and attention. If we are paying attention, it's, we are more likely to end up in the branch of reality which, which has it for real, and the colonies will become more real, more manifested. And if you forget about it, you might end up in a reality where it never manifested, and the aliens will be different, and the colonies, who will remember about them? Right now, they are very real for me, because I'm talking to Jim, and, uh, and I have every day reminder of that, or every week reminder of that. Um, so it has a chance to manifest fully. So right now it's already went beyond me and Jim. It went in, into the group of people who, for whom it's, it's, it's re real and hopefully uh, we'll share that with the full humanity. Some people have very different image of aliens and I don't know, they reject, some reject the aliens I'm speaking to because they don't believe in aliens, and others don't reject these aliens because they believe in different aliens. For them, the aliens are so enlightened, so beautiful, so shiny, they can't, can't even think about creating human colonies up there. They're kind of so spiritual that they're thinking about ascension, which we have right now, not as a physical ascension, but more like as a spiritual ascension, which it is in a way. So for them, thinking about aliens and humans meeting face-to-face -face is, is kind of a, a weird thing idea, they, they don't take it. But for me, it, I think it is, it is an idea which uh, can give solutions to everybody. Uh, it can transform the earth in a very positive way. One of the things is, the contact has already happened, and these 200 people up there already met the aliens, and met by volunteering, met in a very peaceful, very creative situation. Uh, and uh, the aliens also learn about us. So for aliens to, and I already know, knew for a long time that aliens are very confused about what we are, how we are, and which way we think and which way we live. So for aliens to meet humans up there and meet with them every day and watch them every day, be in interactive situation, was very educational. So. The colonies already served a great purpose. They, every alien said, not only them individually were transformed by that experience, the whole civilizations were transformed by that experience. They kind of changed their mind how they look at humans uh, very radically. All right, so I think uh, I answered the question, is it real? I think it is almost manifested. It has a very good chance of manifesting fully, physically, but uh, it depends again on our, on our choices and on uh, on the budget of the programmers who program this ma ma matrix. I think we are still living in the matrix. It's a very real experience. It's a very good matrix. It's a very good simulation where we are living. I am in a very good simulated body, and you are in a very good simulated body. So it's uh, for us. It's really hard to to cheat on that matrix. 
And the fact that, that we have channeling, it's typical cheating. The, the rules of physical matrix are kind of changed now to allow more and more of, of miracles. And that's a big transformation, the ascension. It's a big transformation of our, our program, which was 3D program, to 4D program, which allows for miracles. And the software is already downloaded and restarted. Basically, we already have upgraded version of the software. And that upgrade was December 21st, 2012. We already operate in a higher vibration uh, software. So um, we already have all the components for implementation of that miracle. And it's not a new thought. It's, it's a title of my book. Book number one, buy it on the website. It's available in print on Amazon. And you can read a free version of electronic book right there on humancalling.org. And now our next question. Michael, you're uh, next. Uh, next question. Yes. Oh, okay. So uh, I I use the list you told me about. Okay, the list of questions yes. from uh, the website. Yeah, okay. Choice, whatever you like. Okay. Uh, Here's a question uh, from Lenny. It's uh, uh, what role does Bashar play in the first contact as a contact specialist? Is it just to make people aware, or does he have a bigger part in it? It's about Bashar. I know. It's all right. Um, I um, I'm a big fan of Bashar. Bashar is an extraterrestrial Sasani. He, they look like greys. The Sasani look like gray. Sasani is uh, a race which was produced from humans and the grays. Zeta grays hybridized humans and themselves, Zeta grays, to a new race which looks like grays but have a much more human DNA and human personality. They have emotions, they have, they can laugh, they have a sense of humor, they have uh, lots of other emotions. They have collective mind, so they have sort of a high mind as well. They have indi very strong individuality. And actually, they thrive on uh, creative conflict, actually. So, Sanya are known to, uh, for asking very transformational questions. So, that's uh, so Sanya are being proud of asking very transformational questions. So, they are not afraid of being bold. They are males are bold of Sasani, so they are not afraid of being bold uh, physically and uh, emotionally. Um, what I learned about Sasani, and this is a new thing about me. So Sas uh, Bashar has been uh, speaking to us through Daryl Anka for 28 years, and he's one of the best channelers, and in my opinion, the best speaker ever. He is really extraordinary. Uh, and his way of speaking evolved a little bit, but even in the beginning he was already already very good. Right now he is just exceptional. He is teaching much. Uh, he speaks about every month and there is a lot of Bashar on YouTube. So go on YouTube and check out Bashar. Uh, what I learned from my alien friends is that Bashar's race, Asani, recently, in the beginning of this year, have gone from fourth dimension to the fifth dimension. They made this transformation. They are making this transformation in uh, synchronous to others. We are transforming from third to fourth. They are transforming from fourth to fifth. Our transformation is much slower, but they kind of went uh, synchronized themselves with us and went up. Fifth dimension is still partly physical. They still have bodies. And I was, uh, say, I was told that Bashar already made it to the fifth dimension. So apparently he's speaking to us from the fifth dimension. I never heard him saying that, but apparently he does. That's what I heard. Um, he was scheduled to die. He, they live about 300 years, and uh, he was about to die. He said that he, he, he was supposed to die about a year or two years ago, but but then again uh, he didn't. And my friends, alien friends, said that he was given extra boost and he lives longer. So so he is still with us, speaking. And I was very happy when he came to me through Jim. So I spoke with him a few minutes. That's an introduction to Bashar. Um, 
somehow the my alien friends, which are Gorkfitnir, Gorkfitnir, led by Yael, they have trouble communicating with society. I don't know why. Uh, both Gorkfitnir and Yael are hybrid race created from human humans and the grace and Sasani have created from humans and the grace so they are sort of brothers in that way they're very similar in many in many ways but somehow uh, and both of them follow the same same path and Bashar introduced Yael many times and he introduced saying that Yael will be the ones who will be first to contact the earth I've opened official contact the earth he said that Phoenix light, the phenomenon of Phoenix lights, when many ships went over the state of Arizona, of Arizona and uh, everybody who wanted to see them, you know, thousands of people saw them. So this was Yael. Yael wore the grace which were in Area 51 crash. So this were, some of them died in a crash, some of them were uh, captured and treated not very well by uh, by secret military, or, you know, official military. So Yael are the ones who will be contact us first. Sasani uh, are already in contact through channeling, but they are not the first ones. They will follow later. Uh, Somehow Yael and Sasani are not consulting very much, but right now I, I wrote to uh, to uh, my alien contacts of Yael Dorkfitnir that Bashar is best. All Sasani are much more knowledgeable about us than you you guys. So please consult with Bashar. Please consult with with Sasani. So Yael, please consult with Sasani. So I'm bringing them together. Please work together. And it looks like it's happening. They say that they started talking to each other. And they talk telepathically, so when they link telepathically, they can download, offload tons of information. So Bashar is a t terrific expert in uh, in human psychology, history, everything. He knows everything that is inside out. He does it from a three-year-old age of his. Uh, he was educated as a first contact specialist. It was his mission from the very beginning, from birth. He was given that it's his hereditary, his family is doing that. He is not only first contact expert in uh, on Earth, he's doing that for other races. Uh, for other extraterrestrial races, they also talk to others. Mm. That's all I know. Uh, they came up with different proposals, uh, Bashar. Uh, some of them was to start that public initiative, some of them to start that public initiative. Uh, and he did great job. Uh, you know, his followers are really advanced, very enlightened, and know a lot about aliens. Um, let's hope that you know they all come together and accomplish the open contact in the best possible fashion. One uh, thing about Sasani is they said, uh, "You guys are not ready." Uh, every time. You said, one of you, one of you humans said, you, I'm ready, come over. Uh, Bashar says, we came over and showed ourselves to you. And every time you ran away screaming. So uh, it's not because they are looking too scary, they look pretty pretty nicely, but uh, it just, just uh, their energy, meaning not only physical energy, spiritual energy, is so transformative that, you know, we start integrating themselves, our parts of uh, split mind, every human has very fragmented split mind, a lot of different fragments kind of coexisting together. When they start integrating each other, uh, old fears come up and people just uh, become scared. So Sasani are not eager to meet with humans face to face yet. So that's, that's why maybe why one of the reasons they are not in the colonies yet. But but I hope they will be soon. Michael, your comment on that? Uh, no, I think uh, I don't have so, so much opinion about it because I don't know much about uh, Bashar uh, visitation of colonies or planning contact. I know his teachings and 
yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's a, it's a, my site is based on his teachings uh, partly. So I, n I know him well, his opinions, his uh, teachings, c communication, the way he talks. He's pretty, he's, he's very funny. So yeah, it's, I like him. Perhaps this Duan Taker will be funny one day as well, more than they are today. They are more diplomatic now, so. Yeah, yeah. this look has a position, so he, um, yeah, being uh, jovial in his position would be, would be a little dangerous. I mean, he has to know the culture way better yeah. to be able to, to be funny. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a good way of doing things. When you're funny, you raise vibration, actually. So, yeah. so it's possible. Uh, what's the next question? Next question, uh, is there a way or method we would be able to measure our own vibrational level? No. <laughs> All right. No. So, <laughs> some some, uh, some uh, reference. Uh, if you are angry 10% of the time, your vibration is not higher than 3.8. If you are angry 1% of the time, and if you are in good mood and loving, big percent of the time, I'll say a lot of time, you probably are around 4.5. If you forgot what is it, what depression is, and you kind of live in meditative st state all the time, love everybody, and are not afraid, and swim through life happily, love lovingly, laughingly, then you're above five. Um, that's all I know. You can comment or you can give another question. I'll give another question. I don't know about much. Uh, are there any particular crystals on our planet that we can use to keep our vibrational level raised, or any symbols? And if so, how would we use them? I know it's a uh, Reiki. Reiki uses symbols as well, right? Yes. You know, Reiki you use symbols. Yes. Yeah. So perhaps it may raise vibration as well. Thank you. I didn't know what to say, but when you mentioned Reiki, that's that's a good. Okay, I don't know the answer, but pay attention to Reiki. Qigong is uh, Qigong is another name, another version of Reiki. Qigong is Chinese, Reiki is Japanese. Any healing with hands is is very helpful. So I can give you a little hint on on using hands. So. When something some sometimes hurt, something hurts, okay. If maybe when a, a child hits something, harm themselves, and mother will pull the hands on the child. That's that's healing energy. And you do the same with you. When something hurts, you can uh, put your hands on yourself. There is a book of channeling by of Jesus by Robert Shapiro. And there was a healer, not Jesus, someone else who, who was who knew Jesus, one of the uh, students who later became a student, but he already knew, she already had this way of healing. They would put their hands, I don't remember, right or left first? I don't remember. Uh, on, on, on the hump here, on the, on the back, right there. So to other person, they put the hands and just hold it like that and send healing energy. In Reiki, you do it in a more systematic fashion. You start with the head, and you move it through the body. And uh, you can do it on other people, and you probably want to take a lesson of Reiki. And some of the lessons can be very inexpensive or free. And so you can learn even from a, from a person who, is, uh, who just knows Reiki. And then you can start, and, or you can start doing it on yourself. So whatever, wherever it hurts, you just put your hands over that, and send healing energy. I like playing with my hands. I can send healing energy from one hand to another, and I kind of feel it, and I kind of get in the mood, and it becomes stronger. Uh, and in meditation, I like my meditation where I lay down, 
very straight. I kind of stretch my vertebra so they kind of move a little bit from each other, I kind of in horizontal position. And I put my hands like that. So it goes this way. How do you call it? It call uh, same as clock clock clockwise. Clockwise. So the energy goes clockwise. Heart here, uh, stomach here. And sometimes I move it around depending on where, where it has to go. Sometimes on the side I put it like that or like that if I'm on the side. And I, I but you know, if I'm straight, I put it like that. And uh, sometimes I could put a pillow underneath. And I close my eyes and invite all my healers, very simple invitation, all my healers, all my healing friends. I am implying my, my alien friends as well to send the energy, healing energy to me and use my hands for that. And I feel how the place under the head becomes first hot. So and I am welcoming this heat. It's kind of, it goes deep inside, heat. And it's not physical, it is etherical, etherical. And uh, it's ether. And, uh, or it's called chi energy, or it's called prana energy, same thing. And then it becomes sort of stiff. Uh, so you can call it uh, sleep paralysis. Yes, you can. I welcome the sleep paralysis. It goes on, and I kind of do a trip there. No drugs, just just mental. You have to be in protected environment. If if, if anything else, you can be in a car with turn on air conditioner, and then. Uh, and then I come back, and so often I come back in 15 minutes or so, in 20 minutes, and I feel, again, this paralysis kind of slowly goes away, and I'm back, and I feel very much refreshed and healed. So I do it twice a day and one time at night. So uh, does it help to answer your question? That's my, you know, healing yourself, and when you're comfortable with healing others, and when you're in good mood, when you can send healing without negative thoughts, that's best. But you know, just formula, I want to heal somebody. I want to really heal somebody. And you don't have to put the hands on the person. It can be, uh, Reiki goes through a distance. So it can be even from a distance. And the more you go into that, that's a big, huge path of being a healer. Everyone is a healer. Everyone is a healer. Even bad guys can be healers. Hmm. Uh, but obviously this, energy that I, realization, I am a healer, purifies you tremendously. When something is broken, something is broken, it's not broken, but so if, when something is broken, you can heal even broken things, like computers and cell phones. Obviously, restarting helps, and clean viruses helps, but, but sending energy to physical things like Car car tire. When you change a car, if you need to un, 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 untie the the nut on the on the, on the car uh, wheel, doing a meditation and sending healing to it and intention to to untie it helps. It works. Uh, Michael, uh, your floor. You're good in that. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. So uh, I would like to tell you about nature symbols you can use to raise your vibration. Uh, I did some for me. Uh, it's important that you decide what what is your spiritual guide or your uh, power symbol. It doesn't have to be a spiritual guide exactly, but uh, just uh, what animal. Think about animals or uh, birds or uh, plants or something. Uh, did you uh, Who impressed you most in the past? Uh, which animal? It, it might be eagle, it might be uh, it might be a raccoon, it might be badger, whatever. And think about it. If you uh, if you can find any, you can just go to nature and and just simply you can ask you can ask just who is my spirit guide. You can do it this way, but it's not most the most efficient way. But you can do it this way. Uh, then you make something like this. It's a circle, and you put your uh, just draw it draw it or paint it with something with with whatever, and uh, make sure it's in, a, in in the middle. You see, uh, I have a hole here. It's uh, my personal symbol, and uh, symbol, and I I can use it to uh, connect with nature. Yeah, just 
it's it's simple paper with uh, with my symbol on it, and I can use it to uh, communicate with nature, to connect with it, and uh, with with its energy and other animals. So, if you have something like that, you can do many things, a lot of things, uh, and to get answers to your questions and energy and raise your vibration. Thank you. I, I wanted to share a few gestures. I think gestures are great. At least I, I like working with hands. Um, one is that. That's kind of asking a question and waiting for the answer. It kind of allows you to focus. And you kind of concentrate some energy here. Another one is more open, like that. Just closing the eyes, inviting the answer. You first ask the answer, ask the question, and then wait for the answer. It doesn't necessarily come, but you might get the answer later. But that sort of invitation is helpful. Also sending thanks. Oh, I, I have my, my, my own homemade prayer. So I was worrying about things. I'm, I'm a worrier. I'm worrying about things. And at some point through Jim, a spirit came. He didn't say who, who he is or she is. And he said, I advise you, and I'll share that advice with you, give thanks to all gods and spirits of the earth, of the sky, of nature, and so on. And that will change your vibration in a way you will be more open to receive. You understand? So, and, and, and it's true. So, it, thank you, thankful mood, thankful mood help you to receive. And they said, without giving, you can't receive. So you have to give thanks. So, so my prayer was, thanks to the water, thanks to the fire, thanks to the air, thanks to the earth. Thanks to creator, thanks to creator, thanks to creator, and thanks to the all. At the end, to the all. The all is the, another name for God. The everything, the nature, the all. Um, another thing is is obviously that that I think they're called mudras in in Hindu, but I'm not sure. So another one is like that. It sort of sends the energy to the frontal lobe and uh, improves your memory and logical logical capacity. All right. Um, if you want to add anything, you are welcome. If you don't, you, we can go to the next question. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. Uh, it's from Safira. Uh, does skepticism play a role in your choosing someone to visit the colonies or not? Even if they have the abilities you wish for, I know a young man who applied and would really like to experience this, yet at the same time is very skeptical that this is all true. So uh, we we have to like uh, do we have to believe in it in order for for us to be taken to the colonies? You ask me. Yeah, if we have to believe in aliens and uh, right. colonies in order for us to be taken. So I hmm. yes, skepticism skepticism is really detrimental. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be stupid. It doesn't mean that you have to be naive. It's more like knowing instead of questioning. So if you are not ready to go forward full way, they are not ready to go forward full way as well. They are a mirror of you. You have to be really wishing to go, really wanting to go, really. It's like, you know, getting a job. Um, you know, the best employee is the one who will go 
more than 100 percent you know i really want that job it doesn't matter how much you pay i really want that job i will do my best no matter what same thing with calling is it's kind of forgetting a job i guess yeah uh when, when we talk to them it's obvious they are paying attention to emotions the mood is very strongly so skeptics especially you know the ones which are proud of their skepticism I'm skeptic for sure but you know I have these both sides which play together I'm skeptic now especially with that prediction for 2027 but I give you my, my answer um, I believe it's true and I believe it's in our power to go from 50 percent 3.5 billion dead to zero so you know it's skepticism converted to knowledge and intention when when it is negative thought converted to a positive thought that transformation from down up that what makes a difference if you are capable of going doing that you will have a chance okay. yeah I, I think so as well it's important it's it's the law of attra attraction synchronicity uh, it's important to uh, believe or at least have good faith and good emotion uh, to something in order for it to experience in order for you to experience it yeah, so uh, I'll start with another question oh another question uh, are they still thinking about doing group earth contacts uh, and if so would it be more likely after f the first contact it, you know, it was like uh, when I suggested the teamwork. So uh, group group Earth contact uh, contacts after the first first big one. If it would be possible for a certain group, groups of people, as you su suggested, universities and uh, uh, like uh, just just for cert certain groups. Yes, uh, I, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Yeah. Obviously, we want it really badly. We really want them to come and visit us. Uh, here in yeah. Rochester, we have a group which is called Metaphysical uh, Study and Support Group. So it's uh, merged two groups. First, it was Metaphysical Study, where we watched YouTube videos and discussed books and shared books. And there was also a uh, support group where we supported abductees. So we, abdu alien abductees came to us, shared their experience, or paranormal people who had some spiritual experience, positive or negative, shared their experiences with us. And people who saw uh, uh, saucers and had other sightings came and shared with us. These are small groups, but you know, we have about 200 members and uh, passive members and about I would say seven active members. So, um, and and now with James joining us, it's 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 kind of started growing. We come together. The ascension is in a way going from individual human to coming together and building a network. And if we talk about Reiki and chakras, individual human is solar plexus ch chakra right here solar plexus all right and collective human is heart chakra so it's going from the stomach upper here behind the veil behind the diaphragm to, to the heart so that transformation from being centered self-centered in old humanity to to love and connectedness in humanity Physi physiologically, it goes from uh, okay, e etheric physiology. In etheric physiology, it goes from being focused on that chakra to going to, to that chakra. Um, I think it's not directly related to the, to the question. What was the question? The question was uh, uh, if they uh, yes. if they plan to visit certain yes after the first so, contact. Connected together is important, and the groups already exist. We would welcome them. Um, my dear aliens, please come visit us. Mm. As holographic projections, it would be terrific. Uh, obviously, you're not there yet. Uh, one idea which was which was uh, proposed, I think, by Liney. Uh, I think she said, you already have that 
group meditation in your colonies where you teach humans the telepathy. How about you teach us that group meditation through gym and we'll sit together in the webinar and we will uh, be taught how to do telepathy. Next question. Our next question, uh, it, it's my question. Uh, do they use mathematics as we do? I think it has many limitations when it comes to uh, many many objects when they interact together. So okay. our mathematics is not, not uh, I mean the higher. Sorry. Your sound is not good because the, the connection is not good enough. Can you speak just slower and that will allow more sound and don't move at that time. So. Uh, more uh, less information per per second will go through, so it will be easier to hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Question. So, uh, do they use mathematics as we do? Uh, yes. It has many. Yes, uh, the exactly the same mathematics as we do. Oh. Uh, all right. Uh, I I didn't ask the question to my friends, but you know they always use percentage. You know, how do you feel today? 95% or something like, of perfect or something of that sort. So they're very funny oh, okay. using percentage. So when I ask them about 95% uh, uh, confidence range, which is from human statistics, they didn't understand fully, but but at least they, they started to express their uh, reports in, 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 in a range percent. So they, they're mathematically all right. I just wanted to share um, the way the aliens count in the galaxy. And it makes sense. Um, they have a different counting system. Mm -hmm. uh, so on our hands, we can only count to 10, right? And when it goes to 11, it's already you have to use something else to, to, to count. So yeah. they can uh, count to much bigger number of hands. That was from one YouTube video. Uh, so count like that. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then it becomes uh, 12 and 1, 12 and 2, 12 and 3. So it's 12 base system. And they can count, I think, to 144 just on two hands. And the, the hands, obviously, it, it, it works only for humanoids with five fingers and uh, three parts, I think they're called phalanges, on, uh, on the fingers. So, but, but you know, that was very interesting. Uh, yeah. you know, your next question. Uh, next question. Uh, uh, how did they handle evil people and people who just did want to listen to positive thoughts in their own planetary system? I know they use telepathy to uh, discover bad intentions and uh, things like that. But uh, like uh, they they always did they always use tele telepathy in in their past? Two questions. Might be so. How did they? How do they deal with the bad people, and uh, do they deal yes. with bad people, and how do they uh, do they have telepathy all the yes. time? Um, yes. First question. It really depends on the race uh, and civilization. Um, once uh, Disdu said, I, I said to Disdu, you, you guys have huge bureaucracy. And he said, yeah, I know what bureaucracy is, uh, or something like that. Uh, I said, maybe we have huge bureaucracy. And he said, yeah, I know what bureaucracy is. He said that we uh, also had bureaucracy in the past, but we kind of overcame it. And he described what, we, what he meant. He said, in the past, when somebody behaved in a way the society didn't like, uh, the police, their police, you know, which would be very different, uh, would come and remove them just without notice. They would give them maybe one notice and then second time they would just remove them. That was that bad. <clears throat> so they said they don't have a bureaucracy right now, but uh, again, they said in, uh, in their society, they have families and children. I don't know how long the children stay with the, with the, with the families, but if you mistreat your children, after second notice, third time, they just take the child away, which is very much like in human society. But because they're so efficient, I'm afraid it could be, it could be very uh, too efficient. So, so uh, obviously, you know, having mess like we, we, we humans have a lot of mess, and our uh, systems of uh, total control are very inefficient. So, 
in Soviet Union it was possible to take a child away, but right now it's so much mess that you know you can keep your child and nobody will take it away. So I don't know if I want uh, the efficiency in these bureaucratic questions. Uh, bad people. Uh, recently we have like cash channel, and uh, he said a few centuries ago somebody revolted and there were followers and apparently you know that revolt didn't come up with the change of the system, but there were a lot of followers. But now right now they, he said, yeah, Lakesh is sort of a counselor. Yeah, that's his profession. He's a counselor. He has about a thousand aliens out of their several trillions. So a thousand aliens report being counseled by, by him. So he watches them and when they misbehave, it's his responsibility to come and or you know, contact them by means of communication, I don't know which ones, and to counsel them to uh, bring them back to good way of life. So, But he says they didn't have any crime for, for many hundreds of years, and nobody killed in crime. So, so uh, their system is pretty efficient in that way. Lirans, I didn't ask about bad Lirans, uh, Pleiadians, Pleiadians are very much like humans in many ways. I would assume there are some some negative people, uh, and every one of them, yeah, you have have negative separatists who are separated and don't live with others. So they fly somewhere on the ships and live elsewhere. Pleiadians have some negative Pleiadians. Uh, there are renegade Pleiadians. So every one of those races uh, have offshoots. So. So uh, there are many, you know, there are many answers to that. Um, if you encounter, I mean, one thing is how society deals now. When, when the aliens encounter bad guys, it really depends how strong you are and how strong they are in, uh, in their feelings. Like if, if an alien, my question to just do, uh, no, it was to Lakesh. How would you guys deal with a negative human if you met them? That was a very enlightening question, a very educational one. So, like I said, I would uh, simply disappear. I have the technology to disappear. We, we, we kind of can do that. Uh, this do would simply disappear. They can mentally disappear. They don't even te need technology for that. They can mentally come, pop up and pop out uh, of the reality. Um, meeting bad human. Uh, Lirans, uh, they're very strong. Uh, very big and strong, so and they're nine feet tall, and also they, uh, I think they can, f yeah, like you said, they have a way to stun person physically, or you know, electrically, a strong stun, just physiological, meaning without technology, just they have a stunning mechanism. So they're like Scorpio can stun someone, not kill, but stun enough to stop. Uh, Pleiadians, I didn't ask about Pleiadians. I, I, I'm told they're very strong, but I, I don't know the details. But they are very physically strong, uh, or oh, I don't mean physically, very mentally strong. So when our weak, feeble human mind meets any of those, they can control us in some ways, not others, but in some ways they can overcome us with one human. With multiple, obviously, when the yellow were captured, they were mistreated, so, and they didn't disappear. So, um, so it, it depends really where you are. Uh, not many of them can breathe our air, so uh, Pleiadians have breathing uh, uh, apparatus, which is very comfortable, but they still have to breathe their air, which is close to ours, but you know, uncomfortable. Yael also uh, would, would need different atmosphere. Uh, I'm not sure about Lirans, I didn't ask about that. Uh, meeting bad guys. Mm. I also asked another question, which is re relevant. You know, which ones of them like hugging? You know, if I want to hug someone, you know, how would they treat that? Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer was, uh, Grace and Yael would love hugging. They like touching. They are very physical in that way, and they wouldn't be harmed, uh, or they wouldn't harm us by by touching. Uh, Pleiadians. Uh, physically very similar to us, but you know it's in their culture to be to keep distance. So they would would not be welcoming the hug. They are like as I understand, like our uh, Englishmen. Englishmen are mm -hmm. comparing to Brazil. Brazilians like hugging, and Englishmen don't. It's just part of the culture. 
Uh, uh, and Lakesh said, Lirans would mind hugging, but you have to warn them not to crush you when they hug you. <laughs> right? Okay, so um, there is another question we can answer, but uh, I guess it's the last one we we can answer. It's uh, uh, is the is the is the ego mind holding us back spiritually? I guess so. Yeah, the con conscious mind if they it want, keeps us they want to start from spiritual. Answering that. Who? Who? Or uh, oh, what do I have to say? Or Michael, do you want to answer the question first? Oh, okay. So I think it does. <laughs> it holds us back spiritually, but uh, we can deal with it. We can we can uh, uh, control it. It's part of uh, part of us. And through dreaming and dream state, we can actually suppress it in a and control it. It's a simple answer. But if you want to make it longer, Max. All right. So it really depends how you define ego mind. It really depends. How do you define ego mind? I think it's uh, our con conscious uh, part of our brain, like the left. Uh, mostly in our left hemisphere. I guess it would be a good definition, perhaps. I don't know. All right. So it really depends how you find the mind. I um, I follow Bashar on that, and he defines ego mind as a mechanism which holds us together. Basically, if not ego mind, we would dissolve in environment. Yeah. There are some um, psychiatric disorders or autists or just people who really have trouble controlling themselves. They always been controlled by others. People with weak ego who are run by others and who need somebody to teach them all the time and drive them all the time. So, uh, ego mind is necessary to be able to control yourself. So, uh, everybody has ego mind in that definition. Uh, even spirits have ego mind because otherwise they wouldn't be able to speak individu individuality. So, when they speak to an individual who speaks for themselves, they have ego. This, I think it's a perfect de definition. Ego is absolutely necessary for survival and for being yourself. It's ego. I mean, it is something which makes you one and unique, separate from others. Otherwise, you will be just dissolved. You wouldn't be able to exist. You would be like, uh, I think even something very diffuse, like um, some plant which diffuses like mushrooms, they still have ego because they kind of need nutrients, they need to protect themselves to... Are you there? I am. Uh, there is some problem, but I think... Hello, are it's you a... there? I am. Uh, it's right, connection. Maybe, because there was some, some, some message that something is wrong. Okay. Oh, very good. All right, that's fine. So, so eager mind. Uh, I think eager mind is necessary. Uh, when it comes against your interest, when you kind of become fragmented and what you want is not what your ego want, is my meaning you have two egos, right? Mm -hmm. It's on the, the question of being fragmented versus integrated. Fragmented versus integrated. So you want to integrate with your ego mind. You want to be friend with it. You want to be it. You want your ego to be yourself and to be integrated. Now, egotistic behavior is maybe the, the bad thing. Obviously, altruism is good, but to be altruistic, you have to have energy, power. And to get power, you have to be taking care of yourself. You cannot be altruistic without taking care of yourself first. Even when you have to, what's that word? I don't know that word. Uh, 
take an action to sacrifice yourself. That's the word. When you want to sacrifice yourself, your ego is there. You sacrifice yourself for a better good of others or serve others. The ego is there. And when you die, you don't lose your ego. You It, it goes beyond the life. Yeah, so your it's, spirit goes after death. Yeah. And your personality stays there. It unites with God, unites with God itself. But uh, the personality is the same thing. It's just part of personality. It's a mechanism of keeping it whole. So egotistic behavior is is bad when it is irrational, but it's also a choice. Uh, ego is absolutely necessary for 3D experience because the main purpose of 3D experience is to make choices, as 4D as well, to make choices. To make choices, you have to have an ego. Yeah. About that. Yeah, so uh, according to this definition, it's like uh, ego is our, our only source of motivation, so it's necessary to be a friend with it. Yeah, because without it, there would be no motivation, no, no action, no, no actions, right? It, it's like we wouldn't exist, so okay, and uh, I think. Right. I would ask another question uh, similar to it. Uh, we have like our mind, uh, as we have fragmented mind, we have, our, our mind is easily programmed and uh, our conscious mind, um, it, it tries to suppress something, uh, something some spiritual things from, uh, from our uh, daily experience. It's like a human, human part of physical brain, it's not uh, only mind. It's part of brain which tries to uh, su suppress our uh, spiritual experiences. So, um, uh, how we how we can how can we uh, uh, suppress it or or uh, get it out of our? I don't know how to explain. Oh. Oops. All right. The question is. Oh, the question uh, is. Yeah. When our mind, physical mind, goes, suppresses our spiritual. Yes. Yes. Uh, what to do with it? Yes. Uh, how do we become more spiritual, and do we have to limit our physical mind? Yes. That's a great question. And the answer is beyond beyond my capacity to to address fully or even adequ adequately. Uh, there are many forms of that question. First, uh, our physical mind again is absolutely necessary for survival. To become spiritual, you have to survive first. You know, by sacrificing, by killing yourself. I don't know if you become more spiritual or less. You know, if you become less successful in this life, would you be more spiritual or less spiritual? That's a big question. Uh, there is no answer to that. Yeah. Um, there is some optimum. Basically, as a race, we want to be physical. It's our and the ascension is also us to remain physical just to evolve. So, so if you align yourself with the idea of ascension, you have to remain physical and to be successful physically as a race and become more spiritual as a race, as a group, not only as individuals, but as groups. So success in physical life, I think, is, is very important. Uh, it's, again, be more friends between spiritual, it's be more friends between higher self and physical mind than to fight. So. Again, it's a, you know you can look at the glass; it's half full or half empty. So, in one way, in one way, on one hand, physical mind goes against spirituality. On one, on another hand, it's it is part of it. So, so um, you know, my 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 take on it is very mental. Yes, very mental. 
I like to think about all of that, research all of that, and to set my intention based on that knowledge. So I first gain the knowledge, then make a decision, and then become spiritual because of the decision. Obviously, there are alternative ways. You can smoke marijuana, which basically weakens your physical mind, and because it weakens your physical mind, you become more spiritual. It's a possibility. It's one of the ways. Uh, but then you, you lose your health, not directly, but because you are less physical, less your physical mind is not as strong, you just are not professionally as efficient, and you cannot support yourself as well. So if you have a good support, then you can smoke. If you need to support yourself by yourself, then you know smoking nicotine would become would strengthen your physical mind and lessen your spirituality in most cases. At least it allows you to cope with the physical life, but it grounds you. Smoking and drinking coffee grounds you and makes you more physical, more capable physically until you die from, from uh, lung cancer. But, you know, until you die, you have that stronger physical component of your life. Mm -hmm. So you have these drugs and uh, you know, all other drugs to control, or control how much of your physical and versus spiritual you want. I want that integrated again, integrated mm -hmm. tightly. I want physical mind to be extension of my higher self. And it's not full extension because higher self kind of comes in and leaves and, your physical, and much of the time we are on our own with our physical mind. It's a huge, nice, interesting question for research. Say sleepwalking, what is working? Physical mind is obviously absent. Is it higher self walking, sleepwalking, or it's some other part of the brain which is not full physical mind, which is part of the physical mind. Uh, meditation, in meditation, yes, you want to calm your physical mind. You want to put the intention and then slow down your chatter of thinking and allow your higher self to come in. You have to invite, basically. Pronounce it. I am inviting my higher self to be me, to visit me, to visit my body, to speak to me, to be inside of my body, work for me, work through me. And also, it's nice to realize you are a physical mind. If you're in peace with your higher self, you want to work and be an extension of your higher self. And what's the purpose of higher self is Oh, here is a question for you, Michael. What is the purpose of higher self? Well, purpose of higher self, oh, <laughs> it's to uh, yeah. direct our lives, our incarnation, and it, it's we are not separate from it. It's uh, it's actually our soul, part of our. Uh, it's our soul, and we are just uh, our lower mind is just part of it, so to say. So, so the purpose is to, the purpose uh, to direct our lives and yeah, to, to direct to exist. To exist as because we, because we exist, so must the higher the higher, system, higher self must exist as well. All right. So, what's the purpose of incarnations? Perhaps <laughs> to gain experience, to express express something, or Perfect. make That's something what I balance. So the create purpose of higher self is. is to experience and to grow and to be more of self expressed in more and more ways. So to experience and express, right? To experience right. life and express. And, and I understand that this physical life feeds a lot of knowledge and energy into higher self. Yeah. And the most successfully here not only monetary, but in all ways, more sophisticated. The more sophisticated and happy you are here, the more energy goes up there. God, above our higher self, receives that energy and enjoys that experience. That's, you know, the, the whole idea of creation is to create more in a more interesting way. Yeah. So, 
if you decide for yourself that you know I my physical mind volunteers to be extension of higher self and get more experience that helps in many ways to be successful successful in life because your idea of success now is not for ego not for egotistic reasons to be successful this body this physical minds not for pleasure but to get an experience to for higher self now when you get a challenge a test and sometimes these are very tough you might realize this is also an experience and the way you treat this experience is a learning thing you have to learn higher self wants to learn and the reason you're given that experience because higher self in the past life in past lives didn't get it right and they want to get it righter better writer more correct and sometimes you don't get it correct but still you get the experience and later in the afterlife you still review that and learn from that and here is like in the past, in the last session I was sort of too short and it kind of came out clumsily when I was speaking about the experience of being late of being tardy and being late to work being late to a meeting being late to a meeting with friends being always late and being afraid of that I guess that's one of the theme of my life here and many other lives we are constantly under time pressure not all of us but many of us and I realize that it's only in recent industrial society it is so strong even 50 years ago if you watch movies if you lived 50 years all right I lived 49 years ago if you lived 50 years ago uh, the life was way slower you know people still were late still still lived on the clock but the life was way slower back then and you know people had watches and timing and bell towers which now is the time in in uh, England and uh, and Germany and few other countries I think Italy they had this time time even thousand years ago they had they had the bell towers and they they lived by time but it was slower and it was not all the society lived under time pressure some people lived very tight on very tight time pressure but most others lived much more relaxed time so all these previous incarnations they were not as dense in timing so this this time now is uh, is exceptional you guys we guys are living in, in a time when when time is, is so important and time pressure is so important so what do you do with this is important and how do you react to that and it's a learning experience for the whole human race it's something new that human race didn't experience before that timing thing and it introduces fear and introduces irresponsibility because because I'm late I lose control over myself and I'm angry at everybody and I'm driving like a madman and things of that sort uh, and cut through lines and do a lot of nasty things to others because I'm late and because of fear and stuff so so one of the solutions I pronounced yes the last time was whatever solution is my favorite whatever I am late whatever it brings you peace and there are many others but basically another solution is never again uh, I'm going to be late on the plane I will arrive to the airport extra two more hours in advance I will never be late for a plane I will never be late for a train uh, I will be never late for appointment so I will schedule more carefully and that brings you peace when you drive a car and you know you have another extra so much time it's completely different and when you learn that lesson you just realize you know things are not given to you so things are given to us the reality official and all guides kind of collaborate with other guides network with other guides spiritual guides 
in Brina's experiences, and some of these experiences are pretty nasty, pretty challenging, pretty, uh, what is it word? Mm, educational, that is another word. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and so some experiences are tough. But, you know, when you learn the lesson, you just stop getting those experiences. Like, you know, I think in my life I had, in past life I have problems with authority, dealing with authorities, dealing with bosses. So in this life, I had so nasty bosses who treated me badly, and uh, and I think I learned much. And at some point, they just stopped. Maybe because I changed, or maybe because I took it differently. So, so when you, it, it takes two people to to be in conflict. It has to be a nasty boss or a bully, and a second person has to react to that. When when you don't react to the bully, he cannot bully you anymore. Uh, so these kind of lessons are given. What question am I answering? Uh, it's all. Higher self. Any other? Yeah, higher self. Physical mind. Yeah, so physical mind, so there is a mental part of that, and there is emotional part of that, and there is a part which is inherited by higher self. So, yeah. so you experience that mentally, Give you time to experience that emotionally. Because what you learn mentally has to go through emotional to become complete. Um, you have to be aware of your emotion. It's, uh, you know, when your heart and mind work together and you feel something and you think about that and you feel about it, you pronounce it, you convert it to words, you convert it to less learned in uh, in rules which you kind of cherish, um, that is inherited to the spirit way better. When it is only mental or only emotional, it's not as complete. Uh, a huge part of that is letting things go, dropping things, forgetting things, forgetting on purpose. I'm not that anymore. I don't take that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, when you grow first part of your life, whatever number of years, big part of your life, you do things for the first time. You smoke cigarettes first time, you drink alcohol first time, you kiss your first time, you have a child first time, you know, you um, sustain the death, death of close relative for the first time. You kill something, hopefully not a human, something for the first time, a mosquito, whatever. Um, you cheat first time, you tell a lie first time, you cut the uh, waiting line first time, and then you start living last time. I don't do that anymore. I don't uh, mountain skin anymore. Uh, I fuck a version last time in my life, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so that can be a conscious choice. Uh, I'm not cheating anymore, I'm not lying anymore, I'm not afraid anymore, I will not do that thing anymore, or it's not my vibration anymore. So, so that sort of letting things go is very indicative, very characteristic of this year 2013. That's a huge part of our transformation. First it is individual, but then it is collective. We are not doing things anymore of that style. So this 99% movement, movement is very refreshing, very releasing. It's like hippie movement. Hippie movement was very much an ascension. It was, it was a, one of the waves of ascension. It was a relaxation of rules. It was a big awakening. And many understood that. John Lennon certainly understood that. At that time, it was a huge awakening. They, and he said that at that time, you probably wouldn't live to the time when it will happen. The spring is far. We have a, our, our awakening is, you know, is still in the winter, he said, and you know, we probably wouldn't live to that spring. But the spring is coming. So that's that's you know, we are, I guess today is like in the awakening. It's like uh, days of March, early days of March in Europe, when the snow is still there, but the sun is shining and things drop, the, the, uh, the icicles melt, and, and, and 
water drops on on the ground and making you know there are already holes of of grass kind of sticking through the ground and we are the grass we are grassroots we are grassroots movement and I mentioned that I created a site called groundteam.org it's not alive yet but you know from from the idea of human colony and going up uh, there is another idea of being grassroots of welcoming party for the for the aliens and we're not the first ones obviously there is SETI movements and ESETI movements which is I don't remember how to decipher those but it is uh, extraterrestrial contact uh, of the fourth kind when you welcome invite the aliens and the fifth kind when you invite the aliens they come on your invitation and that happens there is a YouTube video where a person invites the aliens to show up in the sky and he does it on crowds and they show up in the sky and you can see the, the, the it's more like orbs but you know they come on invitation I would wish uh, we could do that and I would want to see you know at least something in the air so far every day of my life is a surprise I, will, I look at the air and I don't see any sp alien spacecraft and it is a big surprise um, oh okay I think it's time to thank everybody so we gladly accept your donations. Your donations make us way happier. And you can um, buy my books. Uh, part of that is printing them. But part of that will, will come to me and uh, will help support in the website and myself and Jim. Uh, Jim needs your money. Jim needs uh, needs uh, last from the last webinar. There were a few donations which really make uh, uh, a, big, a huge difference. First, it is physical help and second is a sign of support and please come visit the site uh, humanocolony.org and uh, um, rainbowlights.org Michael now it's your turn to say goodbye yeah uh, thank you everyone for listening and for watching uh, I hope you will uh, you have learned something and you will apply it in a good way so thank you All right. Thank you. Oh, well, I will do that. How about it? Live on and prosper. Michael, do that thing. Oh uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, it's hard. <laughs> All right. Good.